Hey everybody, it's chapter 3, the skeletal system. Let's get started. So, in the overview of the skeletal system of chapter 3, we have major structures, of course bones. They act as the framework for the body, protect the internal organs, and store the mineral calcium. The, we have a few related word roots, uh, four of them, os, ossi, os, ossi, osti, osteo, and ost, osto. Next, we have bone marrow, which forms some blood cells. The word root for bone marrow is myel, myelo, which is also the same for spinal cord. Cartilage creates a smooth surface for motion within the joints and protects the ends of bones. You'll know we're talking about cartilage when you see a medical term with the word root chondra, chondro. Joints are where two bones come together and work with the muscles to make a variety of motions possible. When we use the word root arthra, arthro, we're discussing joints. Ligaments connect one bone to another, and the word root for a ligament is ligament, ligamento. The synovial membrane forms the lining of synovial joints and secretes synovial fluid. The word root for synovial membrane is synovi, synovio, and synov, synovo. Synovial fluid is the lubricant that makes smooth joint movements possible. The word roots for synovial fluid are interchangeable with the synovial membrane, being synovi, synovio, and synov, synovo. Finally, the bursa cushions areas subject to friction during movement. The word root for bursa is burs, burso. Next, we have your keyword parts and key medical terms. This is a great place to study, focus, and create some flashcards. Objectives for Chapter 3 include identifying and describing the major functions and structures of the skeletal system, describing three types of joints, differentiating between the axial and appendicular skeletons, identifying the medical specialists who treat disorders of the skeletal system, and recognizing, defining, spelling, and pronouncing terms related to the pathology and diagnostic and treatment procedures of the skeletal system. The skeletal system has many important functions. Bones act as a framework of the body. Bones support and protect the internal organs. Joints, in conjunction with muscles, ligaments, and tendons, make possible the wide variety of body movements. Calcium, required for normal nerve and muscle function, is stored inside the bones. And red bone marrow, which is located in spongy bone, has an important function in the formation of blood. The structures of the skeletal system include bones, cartilage, ligaments, joints, and bursa. Bone is a form of connective tissue and is almost the hardest tissue in the human body. Only dental enamel is harder. Although it is very hard and dense, bone is a living structure that changes and is capable of healing itself. The tissues that make up bone are summarized in Table 3.1, and that's on page 38. Here we have Table 3.1 where we see the tissues of a bone, on the outer side, we have the periosteum, which is the tough fibrous tissue that forms the outermost covering of the bone, peri meaning surrounding, osti meaning bone, and um is the noun ending. We have compact bone, which is the hard, dense, and very strong bone that forms the outer layer of the bones. Spongy bone, which is lighter and not as strong as compact bone, commonly found in the ends and inner portions of long bones, such as the femur. Red bone marrow is located within the spongy bone. And finally, we have the medullary cavity. That's located in the shaft of a long bone. The medullary cavity is surrounded by compact bone. It is lined with endosteum and contains yellow bone marrow. Next, let's talk about bone marrow. Of the two kinds, red bone marrow, located within spongy bone, is hematopoietic, and it manufactures red blood cells, hemoglobin, white blood cells, and megakaryocytes that produce thrombocytes. These are types of blood cells we're going to discuss more in chapter 5. Just be careful the word part myel myelo means either bone marrow or spinal cord. Yellow bone marrow is found in the medullary cavity and it's composed chiefly of fat cells and functions as a fat storage area. The term hematopoietic means pertaining to the formation of blood cells. Hamat hamato meaning blood and poetic meaning pertaining to formation. The term hemopoietic also means pertaining to the formation of blood cells. Hem, hemo meaning blood and poietic meaning pertaining to formation. 
Now let's talk cartilage, which is the smooth, rubbery, blue-white connective tissue that acts as a shock absorber between bones. Cartilage, which is more elastic than bone, makes up the flexible parts of the skeleton, such as the outer ear and the tip of the nose. Articular cartilage covers the surfaces of bones that form joints to make smooth joint movement possible and to protect the bones from rubbing against each other. The meniscus is the curved fibrous cartilage found in some joints such as the knee and the temporomandibular joint of the jaw. Anatomic landmarks of a bone exist so you can discuss them possibly through periodical or through writing a letter or by reading out of a textbook. The diaphysis is the shaft of a long bone. The epiphysis, which is covered with articular cartilage, is the wide end of a long bone. The proximal epiphysis is the end of the bone that is located nearest to the midline of the body. The distal epiphysis is the end of the bone that is located farthest away from the midline. A foramen is an opening in a bone through which blood vessels, nerves, and ligaments pass. For example, the spinal cord runs through the vertebral foramen, shown in figure 3.13. A process is a normal projection of the surface of the bone that serves as attachments for muscles and tendons. For example, the mastoid process is a bony projection located on the temporal bone just behind the ear. Joints, also known as articulations, are connections between bones. As used here, the term articulate means to join or come together in a manner that allows motion between the parts. Articulate also means to speak clearly. Different types of joints make a wide range of motions possible. These include sutures, symphysis, and synovial joints. A suture is a jagged line where bones join and form a joint that does not move. Suture also means to stitch. A great example of a suture is the coronal and sagittal sutures, which run across the top of the skull in an adult. On a baby's head, the fontanelle, also known as the soft spot, is where the sutures between the frontal and parietal bones have not yet closed. This spot disappears as the child grows and the sutures closed. Be careful because there's an alternate spelling to this term. A symphysis, also known as a cartilaginous joint, is where two bones join and are held firmly together so that they function as one bone. An example of this would be the pubic symphysis. Synovial joints are movable joints of the body. Although these joints are described in simple terms, they are actually very complex. A couple examples are like ball and socket joints, such as the hips and shoulders. Those are synovial joints that allow a wide range of movement in many directions. Also, we have hinge joints, like the elbows or the knees. Those are synovial joints that allow movement primarily in one direction or plane. So now let's check out what makes up a synovial joint like the hip or the knee or the elbow or the shoulder. A ligament is a band of fibrous connective tissue that connects one bone to another bone. Just don't confuse ligaments and tendons. Tendons attach muscles to bones. Synovial joints are surrounded by a fibrous capsule and are lined with synovial membrane. The synovial membrane secretes synovial fluid and that acts as a lubricant to make the smooth movement of joints possible. A bursa is a fibrous sac that is lined with a synovial membrane and contains synovial fluid. A bursa acts as a cushion to ease movement in areas that are subject to friction, like the shoulder, elbow, and knee joints, where a tendon passes over a bone. Now, let's talk about the 206 bones in the adult human body. To make it easier to talk about, we're going to break it into the axial and appendicular skeletal systems. The axial skeleton, which contains 80 bones, protects the major organs of the nervous, respiratory, and circulatory systems. The term axial refers to the imaginary line or axis that runs through the center of the body. The axial skeleton consists of the skull, spinal column, ribs, and sternum. The 126 bones of the appendicular skeleton makes body movement possible and also protects the organs of digestion, excretion, and reproduction. The term appendicular means referring to an appendage, which is anything that is attached to a major part of the body. 
the appendicular skeleton is organized into upper and lower extremities. The upper includes shoulders, arms, forearms, wrists, and hands, and the lower include hips, thighs, legs, ankles, and feet. Now let's start beginning to discuss specific bones. For this, we'll start at the top and work our way down, beginning with the bones of the skull. First, we have the cranium. That's the portion of the skull that encloses the brain. Crani, cranio, meaning skull, and um is our noun ending to make it a medical term. The cranium is made up of the following bones. The frontal bone, that forms the forehead. The parietal bones, form most of the roof of the upper sides of the cranium. The occipital bone forms the posterior floor and walls of the cranium. The spinal cord passes through the foramen magnum of the occipital bone. The temporal bones form the sides and base of the cranium. The sphenoid bone forms part of the base of the skull and parts of the floor and sides of the orbit. The orbit is the bony socket that surrounds and protects the eyeball. The ethmoid bone forms part of the nose, the orbit, and the floor of the cranium. The auditory ossicles are bones of the middle ear, and they help you hear. We also have the external auditory meatus, which is the external opening of the ear, and that's located in the temporal bone. Finally, we have the bones of the face. The zygomatic bones, also known as cheek bones, articulate with the frontal bones. The maxillary bones form the most of the upper jaw. The palatine bones form part of the hard palate of the mouth and the floor of the nose. The lacrimal bones make up the part of the orbit of the inner angle of the eye. The inferior conchi, or conchae, are the thin scroll-like bones that form part of the interior of the nose. The vomer bone forms the base for the nasal septum. The nasal septum is the cartilage structure that divides the two nasal cavities and forms the base of the nose. The mandible, also known as the lower jawbone, is the only movable bone of the skull. The mandible is attached to the skull at the temporomandibular joint, which is also known as the TMJ. The hyoid bone is unique in that it does not articulate with any other bone. Instead, it's suspended between the mandible and the laryngopharynx. Below the skull, we have the thoracic cavity. The thoracic cavity is made up of the ribs, sternum, and thoracic vertebrae. Also known as the rib cage, the structure protects the heart and lungs. There are 12 pairs of ribs called costals, which attach posteriorly to the thoracic vertebrae, cost costo meaning rib and al meaning pertaining to. The first seven pairs of ribs are called true ribs, and they're attached anteriorly to the sternum. The next three pairs of ribs are called false ribs, and they're attached anteriorly to cartilage that joins with the sternum. Finally, there's two pairs of ribs on the bottom called floating ribs, they are not attached anteriorly. The sternum, also known as the breastbone, forms the middle of the front of the rib cage, and it's divided into three parts. The top part, called the manubrium, it's bone, and that's the upper portion of the sternum. The body of the sternum, which is also bone, is the middle portion of the sternum, and then there's on the bottom the xiphoid process, which is actually cartilage, and that's the lower portion of the sternum. The shoulders form the pectoral girdle, which is also known as the shoulder girdle. That supports the arms and hands. As used here, the term girdle means a structure that encircles the body. The clavicle, also known as the collarbone, is a slender bone that connects the sternum to the scapula. It's the most commonly broken bone in your body. The scapula is also known as the shoulder blade. The acromion is an extension of the scapula that forms the high point of the shoulder. Now we have bones of the arms. The humerus is the bone of the upper arm. The radius is one of the smaller bones in the forearm. The radius runs up the thumb side of the forearm. 
The ulna is the larger bone of the forearm, and it articulates with the humerus to form the elbow joint. The olecranon process, commonly known as the funny bone, is the large projection on the upper end of the ulna that forms the point of the elbow that tingles when struck. The bones of the wrist are known as carpals. The metacarpals are the bones that form the palm of the hand. The phalanges are the bones of the fingers, and also the toes, so be careful. Each finger has three bones. These are the distal, medial, and proximal phalanges. The thumb has two bones. These are the distal and proximal phalanges. The spinal column is also known as the vertebral column. This vertebral column consists of 26 vertebrae. The functions of the spinal column are to support the head and body and to protect the spinal cord. An individual vertebra has a couple different parts, so let's talk about that as well. The body is the solid anterior portion of a vertebra. The lamina is the posterior portion of a vertebra. If you're talking about a few of them, you're saying laminae. Several processes extend from this area. The vertebral foramen is the opening in the middle of the vertebra. The spinal cord passes through that opening. The cervical vertebrae are the first set of seven vertebrae that form the neck. They are also known as C1 through C7. Cervical means pertaining to the neck. The thoracic vertebrae make up the second set of 12 vertebrae. They also form the outward curve of the spine and they are known as T1 through T12. The lumbar vertebrae make up the third set of 5 vertebrae. They are known as L1 through L5. The lumbar vertebrae are the largest and strongest of the vertebrae and form the inward curve of the spine. In between those vertebrae you have intervertebral discs. The intervertebral discs, which are made of cartilage, separate and cushion the vertebrae from each other. These discs act as the shock absorbers and allow for movement of the spinal column. The sacrum is a slightly curved triangular shaped bone near the base of the spine. At birth, it's composed of five separate sacral bones. However, in the young child, they fuse together to form one single bone. The coccyx, also known as the tailbone, forms the end of the spine and is made up of four small vertebrae fused together. The pelvic girdle, also known as the hips or pelvic bone, protects internal organs and supports the lower extremities. The structure is made up of three bones that are fused together. The ilium is the upper blade-shaped part of the hip, and that's on each side of your pelvic girdle. The sacroiliac is the slightly movable articulation between the sacrum and the ilium. The ischium is a lower and posterior portion of the pelvic girdle. The pubis is the anterior portion of the pelvic girdle. These three bones, which are also known as pubic bones, fuse together, and in the posterior they fuse with the sacrum. The two pubic bones join at the anterior midline to form the pubic symphysis. It's a cartilaginous joint that holds the bones firmly together. The acetabulum, the large socket in the pelvic bones, forms the hip socket for the head of the femur. Now the bones of the legs and knees. The femur is the upper leg bone, also known as the thigh bone, and it's the largest bone in your body. The head of the femur articulates with the acetabulum, forming the hip socket. The femoral neck is the narrow area just below the head of the femur. The trochanter is one of the two large bony projections on the upper end of the femur, just below the femoral neck. In the front of the knee, we have the patella, and that's the bony anterior portion of the kneecap. The term popliteal refers to the posterior surface of the knee. It's used to describe the space, ligaments, vessels, and muscles in the area. We also have the ACL and PCL, the anterior cruciate ligament and posterior cruciate ligament. They're called cruciate ligaments because they're shaped like a cross. 
In the lower leg, we have the tib-fib. The tibia, also known as the shin bone, is the larger weight-bearing bone in the anterior portion of the lower leg. The fibula is the smaller of the two bones of the lower leg. The tarsals are the bones that make up the ankles. The malleolus is the rounded bony protuberance on each side of the ankle. If you're talking about both of them at the same time, they're malleoli. The talus is the ankle bone that articulates with the tibia and fibula. The calcaneus or heel bone is the largest of the tarsal bones. The metatarsals are the bones of the foot. The phalanges are the bones of the toes and also of the fingers. If you're just talking about one finger or one toe, you can use the term phalanx. Now that we've discussed the bones themselves, let's discuss the medical specialties related to the skeletal system. A chiropractor holds a Doctor of Chiropractic degree and specializes in manipulative treatment of disorders originating from misalignment of the spine. An orthopedic surgeon, also known as an orthopedist, specializes in diagnosing and treating diseases and disorders involving the bones, joints, and muscles. Orthotics is the field of knowledge relating to the making and fitting of orthopedic appliances, such as a brace, a splint, to support and align, prevent, or correct deformities, or to improve the function of movable parts of the body. Osteopathic physicians holds a Doctor of Osteopathy degree and specialize in treating health problems by manipulation, changing the positions of bones. They may also use traditional forms of medical treatment. The term osteopathy also refers to any bone disease. A podiatrist holds a Doctor of Podiatry and specializes in diagnosing and treating disorders of the foot. Pod, podo means foot, and iatrist means specialist. A rheumatologist is a physician who specializes in the diagnosis and treatment of rheumatic diseases. Those are characterized by inflammation in the connective tissues. Rheumatism is a general term for a variety of acute and chronic conditions characterized by inflammation and deterioration of connective tissues. It's a group of disorders that includes joint diseases such as arthritis and muscle disorders such as fibromyalgia. Now let's look at how the skeletal system can get sick or go bad. Enclosis is the loss or absence of mobility in a joint due to disease and injury or surgical procedure. Ankla, anklo meaning crooked, bent, or stiff, and osis meaning abnormal condition. Arthralgia is pain in a joint. Arthra, arthro meaning joint, and alja meaning pain. Arthrosclerosis is stiffness in the joints, especially in the elderly. Arthra, arthro meaning joint, and sclerosis meaning abnormal hardening. Bursitis is an inflammation of a bursa that is typically caused by repetitive movements. Burst, burso meaning bursa, and itis meaning inflammation. Achondroma is a slow-growing benign tumor derived from cartilage cells. Chondra, chondro meaning cartilage, and oma meaning tumor. Chondromalacia is the abnormal softening of the cartilage. Chondra, chondro meaning cartilage, and malacia meaning abnormal softening. Hallux valgus, commonly known as a bunion, is an abnormal enlargement of the joint at the base of the great toe. Hallux means big toe, and valgus means bent. This shift in the joint creates pressure on the other toes because the great toe is forced laterally. Luxation, also known as dislocation, is the dislocation or displacement of a bone from its joint. Subluxation is the partial displacement of a bone from its joint, so a partial dislocation. Synovitis is inflammation of the synovial membrane that results in swelling and pain. Synov, synovo meaning synovial membrane and itis meaning inflammation. It may be caused by an injury, infection, or irritation produced by damaged cartilage. Arthritis is an inflammatory condition of one or more joints.
Arthro arthro means joint and itis means inflammation. There are many different forms and causes of arthritis. Plural is arthritis. Osteoarthritis is also known as wear and tear arthritis. Osti osteo meaning bone, arthro arthro meaning joint, and itis meaning inflammation. It's a degenerative joint disease that is most commonly associated with aging. Gouty arthritis, also known as gout, is a type of arthritis associated with the formation of uric acid crystals in the joint as a result of hyperuricemia, excessive uric acid concentrations in the blood. Rheumatoid arthritis, abbreviated RA, is an autoimmune disorder. In contrast to osteoarthritis, the symptoms are generalized and usually more severe. In RA, the synovial membranes are inflamed and thickened. Other tissues are also attacked, causing the joints to become swollen, painful, and immobile. Enclosing spondylitis is a form of rheumatoid arthritis characterized by progressive stiffening of the spine caused by fusion of the vertebral bodies. Juvenile rheumatoid arthritis affects children. Symptoms include pain and swelling in the joints, skin rash, fever, slowed growth, and fatigue. Pathology of the spinal column can include a herniated disc, also known as a ruptured disc. That's a rupture of an intervertebral disc that results in pressure on the spinal nerve roots. Lumbago, also known as lower back pain, is pain in the lumbar region. Lumb means lumbar and ego means diseased condition. Spondylitis is an inflammation of the vertebrae. Spondyl, spondylo means vertebrae and itis means inflammation. Spondylolisthesis is the forward movement of the body of one of the lower lumbar vertebra on the vertebra below it or on the sacrum. Spondyl, spondylo means vertebrae and listhesis means slipping. It's a slipped disc. Spondylosis is any degenerative condition of the vertebrae. Spondyl, spondylo meaning vertebrae and osis meaning abnormal condition. Spina bifida is the congenital defect that occurs during early pregnancy in which the spinal canal fails to close around the spinal cord. Spina means pertaining to the spine and bifida means split. Many cases of spina bifida are caused by a lack of folic acid, which is a vitamin, during early stages of pregnancy. There's also a few curvatures of the spine. Kyphosis is an abnormal increase in the outward curvature of the thoracic spine as viewed from the side. Kyph, kypho means hump, and osis means abnormal condition. This condition is also known as a humpback, or Dowager's hump. Lordosis is an abnormal increase in the forward curvature of the lower lumbar spine. Lord lordo means bent backward and osis means abnormal condition. This condition is also known as sway back. Scoliosis is an abnormal lateral curvature of the spine, which means it curves sideways. Scoli, scolio means curved and osis means abnormal condition. Bones also have a wide range of pathology. An extosis is a benign growth on the surface of a bone. Ex meaning outside, osti, osteo meaning bone, and osis meaning abnormal condition. Osteologia is any pain linked to an abnormal condition within a bone. Osti, osteo meaning bone, and algia meaning pain. Ostatitis is an inflammation of bone. Osti, osteo meaning bone and itis meaning inflammation. Osteomalacia is the abnormal softening of bones due to disease. Osti, osteo meaning bone and malacia meaning abnormal softening. Osteomyelitis is an inflammation of the bone and bone marrow. Osti, osteo meaning bone, myel, myelo meaning bone marrow, and itis meaning inflammation. Osteonecrosis is the destruction and death of bone tissue caused by an insufficient blood supply, infection, malignancy, or trauma. 
osteo meaning bone, and necrosis meaning tissues death. Paget's disease, also known as osteitis deformans, is a disease of unknown cause that is characterized by extensive bone destruction followed by abnormal bone repair. As the disease progresses, the bones become deformed and weakened and may bend or break easily. Periostatitis is an inflammation of the periosteum. Peri meaning surrounding, ost, osteo meaning bone, and itis meaning inflammation. Rickets, which is caused by calcium and vitamin D deficiencies early in childhood, results in demineralized bones and related deformities. Talipus, also known as clubfoot, is a congenital deformity in which the foot may be turned outward or inward. For different tumors of bones, we have a few examples. Ewing's sarcoma, also known as Ewing's families of tumors, is a group of cancers that most frequently affects children or adolescents. A sarcoma is a malignant tumor of connective tissue, and in Ewing's sarcoma, they usually occur in diaphyses, the shaft of long bones, in the arms and legs, and then spread rapidly to other body sites. A myeloma is a malignant tumor composed of cells derived from blood-forming tissues of the bone marrow. Myeloma is usually progressive, may cause pathologic fractures, and is often fatal. Myel myelo meaning bone marrow and oma meaning tumor. Osteochondroma is the most common benign bone tumor. Osteosteo meaning bone, chondra chondro meaning cartilage, and oma meaning tumor. These tumors are growths on the surface of a bone. They protrude as hard lumps covered with a cap of cartilage. Osteoporosis is a marked loss of bone density and an increase in bone porosity, frequently associated with aging. Osteosteo means bone and porosis means porous condition. Osteoporosis is primarily responsible for three types of fractures. The first being vertebral crush fractures, also known as compression fractures of the spine. Those occur when one or more vertebra become so weak that they collapse spontaneously under minimal stress. It results in pain, loss of height, and development of a curvature of your spine known as a dowager's hump. These changes in the spine cause loss of height, crowding of the internal organs, and reduced lung capacity. Cole's fracture, also known as a fractured wrist, is a fracture of the lower end of the radius. This occurs when a person tries to break a fall by landing on his or her hands, and the trauma causes the weakened bone to break. An osteoporotic hip fracture, also known as a broken hip, can occur spontaneously or as the result of a fall. Complications from these fractures may result in death or the loss of function, mobility, and independence. A fracture is a broken bone. Types include a green stick fracture or incomplete fracture in which the bone is partially bent and only partially broken. This type of fracture is usually longitudinal and occurs primarily in children. A closed fracture, also known as a simple or complete fracture, is one in which the bone is broken but there is no open wound in the skin. A transverse fracture is straight across the bone. An oblique fracture is at an angle. An open fracture, also known as a compound fracture, is one in which the bone is broken and there is an open wound in the skin. A comminuted fracture is one in which the bone is splintered or crushed. Comminuted means crushed into small pieces. A compression fracture occurs when the bone is pressed together on itself. A spiral fracture is a fracture in which the bone has been twisted apart. This occurs as the result of a severe twisting motion, like in a sports injury. A stress fracture is a small crack in bones that often develops from chronic excessive impact. These fractures are also usually due to a sports injury. A fat embolus may form when a long bone is fractured and fat cells from yellow bone marrow are released into the blood. An embolus is any foreign matter circulating in the blood that may become lodged or block the blood vessel. We're going to talk about those later in Chapter 5.
Crepitation, also known as crepitus, is the crackling sensation that is felt and heard when the ends of a broken bone rub together. As the bone heals, a callus forms a bulging deposit around the area of the break. This tissue eventually becomes bone. In order to find out exactly what's wrong with the skeletal system, we have these diagnostic procedures. First, we have arthrocentesis. That's a surgical puncture into the joint space to remove synovial fluid for analysis. Arthro, arthro means joint and centesis means surgical puncture to remove fluid. Arthroscopy is the visual examination of the internal structure of a joint. Arthro, arthro means joint and scopy means visual examination using an arthroscope. Arthro, arthro meaning joint and scope meaning the device used for visual examination. Bone density testing, BDT, also known as bone mass measurement or densitometry, is the use of several types of radiation tests to determine bone density. These tests are indicated for conditions such as osteoporosis, osteomalacia, and Paget's disease. A bone marrow biopsy, BMB, is performed by inserting a sharp needle into the hip bone or sternum and removing bone marrow cells. It is performed as a diagnostic test to determine why blood cells are abnormal. It is also performed to find a donor match for a bone marrow transplant. A bone scan is the use of nuclear medicine to detect bone cancer and osteomyelitis before these pathologies become visible on traditional radiographs. Dual X-ray absorptiometry is a low exposure radiographic measurement that is most often used to detect early signs of osteoporosis and it's abbreviated DXA. Ultrasonic bone density testing called a bone sonometer uses sound waves to take measurements of the heel bone. This is a screening test for osteoporosis and the other conditions that cause a loss of bone mass. If the test indicates risks, more definitive testing is indicated. Magnetic resonance imaging, also known as MRI, is used to image soft tissue structures such as the interior of complex joints and spinal disorders. It is not the most effective method of imaging hard tissues such as bone. Radiographs, also known as x-rays, are used to visualize fractured bones. Now let's look at how to fix the skeletal system in treatment procedures of the skeletal system. Medications include non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, also known as NSAIDs, that are administered to control pain and to reduce inflammation and swelling. Aspirin is an NSAID. Medications in this group also may thin the blood and attack the stomach lining. Acetaminophen also controls pain, but without the side effects of NSAIDs. However, it does not have the ability to reduce inflammation or swelling. Aspirin and acetaminophen are also used as antipyretics. An antipyretic reduces or relieves a fever. COX-2 inhibitor, a newer class of medication, controls the pain and inflammation of osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis while greatly reducing the side effects of NSAIDs. These medications are named for the two cyclooxygenase enzymes that are associated with arritic pain and inflammation. A bone marrow transplant, also known as a stem cell transplant, is used to treat certain types of cancers such as leukemia and lymphomas that affect bone marrow. In this treatment, both the cancer and the patient's bone marrow are destroyed with high-intensity radiation and chemotherapy. Next, healthy bone marrow cells are transfused into the recipient's blood. These cells migrate to the spongy bone where they then grow into cancer-free red bone marrow. Most commonly, you want to use a patient's own bone marrow that you harvest before treatment begins. That's known as an autologous transplant, which means originating within an individual, so autologous. If the patient's own bone marrow can't be used, an allogenic transplant must be used, which is using bone marrow from a donor. 
However, unless this is perfect match, there's a danger that the recipient's body will reject the transplant. Allogenic means originating from within another. Cord blood, which is collected from the umbilical cord immediately after birth, is a rich source of stem cells and has the potential of being an alternative to bone marrow transplants. Joints have a few options, such as arthroscopic surgery, which is the treatment of the interior of a joint, such as the removal of torn cartilage, with the use of an arthroscope and instruments inserted through a small incision. A bursectomy is a surgical removal of a bursa. Burs bursa means bursa, and ectomy means surgical removal. Chondroplasty is a surgical repair of cartilage. Chondra, chondro meaning cartilage, and plasty meaning surgical repair. A synovectomy is a surgical removal of the synovial membrane from a joint. Syno, synovo means synovial membrane, and ectomy means surgical removal. This procedure is performed to repair a joint damaged by rheumatoid arthritis. Arthrodesis, also known as fusion or surgical ankylosis, is a surgical procedure to stiffen a joint, such as a hip or to join spinal vertebrae. Arthro, arthro means joint and desis means surgical fixation of bone or joint. Arthrolysis is a surgical loosening of an ankyloid joint. Arthro, arthro means joint and lysis means loosening or setting free. Also note that the suffix lysis also means breaking down or destruction of and may indicate either pathologic state or therapeutic procedure. A periostomy is an incision through the periosteum. Peri meaning surrounding, osti meaning bone, and otomy meaning surgical incision. Arthroplasty is any surgical repair of a damaged joint. Arthro, arthro meaning joint, and plasty meaning surgical repair. However, this term has come to mean the surgical replacement of a joint, and these procedures are named for the involved joint and the amount of the joint that is being replaced. The replacement part is called the prosthesis, or an implant. The broader definition of a prosthesis is a substitute for a diseased or missing part of the body. Plural would be prostheses. A total knee replacement, TKR, means that all of the parts of the knee were replaced. A partial knee replacement, PKR, means that only part of the knee was replaced. A total hip replacement, consists of two components. The thigh component is a metal shaft fitted into the femur with a metal ball at the top end. The ball fits into a plastic lined cup shaped socket that replaces the acetabulum within the hip bone. Revision surgery is the replacement of a worn or failed implant. Treatments for the spine include a discectomy, which is the surgical removal of an intervertebral disc, in a percutaneous discectomy, a thin tube is inserted through the skin of the back to suction out the ruptured disc or to vaporize it with a laser. Percutaneous means through the skin. A laminectomy is a surgical removal of the lamina from a vertebra. And spinal fusion is a technique to immobilize part of the spine by joining it together with two or more vertebra. This may be performed with a discectomy or a laminectomy and is known as fusing. A craniectomy is a surgical removal of a portion of the skull, cranicranio meaning skull and ectomy meaning surgical removal. A craniotomy is also known as a bone flap, cranicranio meaning skull and otomy meaning surgical incision. This procedure is a surgical incision or opening into the skull that is performed to gain access to part of the brain. A cranioplasty is a surgical repair of the skull. Crani, cranio meaning skull, and plasty meaning surgical repair. Osteoclasis is a surgical fracture of a bone to correct a deformity. Osti, osteo meaning bone, and clasis meaning to break. An osteectomy is a surgical removal of a bone. Osti, osteo meaning bone, and ectomy meaning surgical removal. Note that the word ost for the word root is used to avoid having two e's together when it joins with the suffix ectomy. 
Osteoplasty is a surgical repair of bones. Osti, osteo is the word root meaning bone, and plasty means surgical repair. Osteoraphy is the suturing or wiring together of bones. Osti, osteo meaning bone, and raphi meaning to suture. Osteotomy is the surgical incision or sectioning of a bone. Osti, osteo meaning bone, and otomy meaning surgical incision. This procedure may be performed to realign a joint damaged by arthritis. Treating fractures, we have manipulation, also known as closed reduction, is the attempt to realign the bone involved in a fracture or joint dislocation. The affected bone is returned to its normal anatomic alignment by manually applied forces and then is usually immobilized to maintain the realigned position. Traction is a pulling force exerted on a limb in a distal direction in an effort to return the bone or joint to normal alignment. Immobilization, also known as stabilization, is the act of holding, suturing, or fastening the bone in a fixed position with strapping or a cast. External fixation is a fracture treatment procedure in which pins are placed through the soft tissues and bone so that an external appliance can be used to hold the pieces of bone firmly in place during healing. Once the healing is complete, then the appliance is removed. Internal fixation, which is also known as open reduction internal fixation, ORIF, is a fracture treatment procedure in which pins or a plate are placed directly into the bone to hold the broken pieces in place. This form of fixation is not usually removed after the fracture has healed, so they will stay in place forever. Well, that's mostly everything you need to know for Chapter 3. Make sure you check out the Career Opportunities tab at the back. Check out the Health Occupation Profile on Paramedic. View the study break at the end, and also check out some of the review time to help you better understand the material and get some more practice. Also, don't forget flashcards and study groups. Be good people, do good things, and see you next time. Bye-bye.